A sheltered and artistic freshman's horizons expand outside his engineering studies when he develops an unexpected bond with an older woman and her daughter. As Aaron Milton, an engineering freshman, heads to an Ivy League university with his parents, Phil and Susan, he sketches a man burdened by a ball and chain on his sketch pad. His beautiful drawing hints at his passion for art over science and math. Upon arriving at his dorm room, the controlling mother proudly presents his son with a framed certificate of merit and his old scout scarf and badges. While his parent emphasizes that these items symbolize his academic success and intellect, the artistic teen hesitates to hang them on his wall. Suddenly, his roommate Bill arrives with his girlfriend Fiona, prompting the freshman to introduce them to his folks. Before leaving, Phil advises Aaron not to make the same mistake and then hands him an envelope. Clueless about what he means, the freshman tries to ask, but his parent is on his way back to the car. That evening, Bill orients his roommate about the doorknob rule. If someone doesn't want to be disturbed, all they have to do is hang a necktie on the doorknob so that the other person doesn't enter the room. When Aaron wonders why they can't use notes instead, the promiscuous teen assumes he's inexperienced. Upon hearing this, the freshman claims he's not innocent anymore and suggests using his scout scarf as a necktie. That night, the artistic teen reads his dad's letter with visual advice on pleasuring a woman properly. After reading, he makes a disgusted face and folds the paper. The following morning, Aaron tries to locate his classroom using a map. Along the way, he meets a lost Darcy, who lives in the same dorm building as he does. For his elective class, the engineering student attends an advanced design course with Professor Van Oken, who helped secure his scholarship. During his lecture, the instructor challenges his students to develop an apparatus that enables someone to walk on water by the semester end. In his seat, the uninterested artist just draws Jesus standing on the shark-infested waters. After class, Aaron asks the educator if he can switch to an art elective. However, the professor asserts that he had admitted him to an advanced course because he has a gift for engineering. Later that day, the freshman mistakenly attends a drawing class, thinking it's an engineering classroom. Upon seeing his sketches, the instructor accepts him and asks him to sit beside his beautiful older classmate Linda. The educator then instructs the students to draw the unclothed female model in front of them using clean and simple lines. However, the teen sketches a figure resembling a muscular system. After the class, Linda invites Aaron to skip their following subjects and drink coffee together. In the cafe, she checks his sketchbook, appreciating his talent. Suddenly, the teen hesitates to directly ask her why she's in college at her age, which she senses but doesn't answer just yet. The following morning, Linda invites the artist to have dinner at her apartment the next night. She notes that she'll make lasagna and makes an alluring remark, causing the shy teenager to blush. That night, Aaron attends a Hawaiian-themed dorm party, where he encounters Darcy who has a talent for tying a cherry stem inside her mouth. However, Bill approaches them and offends the female attendee with his creepy remark, prompting her to leave. When the guy apologizes to her, one of the partygoers suddenly throws a water bucket at her and the engineering student, causing them to leave the gathering. A car outside the dorm room honks the next day, and Aaron realizes it's Linda. He grabs a container of wine and leaves the room. After his roommate departs, Bill and his friends glance out the window, spotting the artist spending time with an older woman. In the car, Linda finally opens up to Aaron, sharing that she's back in college to continue her education because she spent her previous years truly living her life. Upon their arrival at her apartment, the woman takes a shower while Aaron discreetly tours the area. Suddenly, Beth, a punky yet foul-mouthed teen, appears and questions his identity. She then identifies as as Linda's roommate and the college student, leading to a brief exchange of swear words. Soon after, Linda intervenes, putting an end to their argument. During dinner, the teen, who turns out to be the woman's daughter, informs the college freshman that her mom doesn't drink liquor. Later that night, Aaron drinks wine alone as Linda shares that she feels left out in college. Upon hearing this, the artist responds that she's a standout because of her confidence. Afterward, the woman turns up the music, and they all dance together. That night, Night, the drunken freshman finds himself on the couch with a blanket and cat beside him. Suddenly, he witnesses Linda welcoming a man inside the apartment. Later, as the older woman and the 
the stranger make love, Beth approaches the artistic teen, knowing he's pretending to be asleep. Due to the awkward situation, Aaron attempts to leave, but the punk suddenly kisses him, prompting him to push her to the floor in shock. When Linda hears the sound, she checks what's going on, leading Beth to hide in the kitchen and the freshman to fake his sleep again. After class the following day, the artistic student returns to his dorm room but sees his scarf on the doorknob, indicating that Bill is having a private time inside. Unfortunately, this occurs in the next few days, causing the freshman to have no area to sleep in properly. As a result, the exhausted Aaron asks for help from Linda, who picks him up so he can rest in her apartment. However, while on the road, a police car follows them, causing the teen to panic. When she pulls over, the freshman discovers that the cop, Wes, is the older woman's boyfriend. Later that night, the policeman joins them and flirts with Linda as she cooks dinner, causing the college student to feel awkward. Suddenly, Beth appears behind the officer and points a weapon at him as a prank, causing the man to feel annoyed. Witnessing the tension between her daughter and boyfriend, Linda hands cash to the prankster and instructs her to purchase eclairs and cigs with Aaron. When they reach the store, Beth greets the clerk Ray Ray and introduces the freshman to him as her problematic cousin. In response, the artist rides along with a punk's lie. After the teen mentions the item she needs, the man flirts, inviting her to hang out. However, the prankster only comments that he's too old for her. Later, as Aaron pays for the items, Beth steals cherry-flavored cigars for him. When they return to the apartment, the foul-mouthed teen witnesses Linda and the cop arguing, leading her to invite the artist to her beautiful room. As the punk works on her crafts, the freshman sketches her and hands over the finished drawing, making her smile. A moment later, Aaron goes to Linda's room, who invites him to sit on his bed so they can chat for a while. When the student worries about Wes's thoughts on him staying in their place, the woman notes that her partner doesn't believe in men and women genuinely being friends. While she mentions that he's attractive, she clarifies that she has no romantic feelings for him. However, later, they tease each other and eventually kiss. Though Linda reciprocates, she pulls away and advises the artist to stop before it gets serious. Despite this, Aaron kisses her again, prompting her to order him to leave the room. After exiting the bedroom door, the freshman sees a pissed Beth walking past him. The following day, the college student listens to the voice message of his worried mom, who's aware that he's skipping his classes. Over the next few days, he attends his advanced engineering class but enjoys his drawing course more because he can flirt with Linda. When Professor Oaken asks him to solve a problem on the board, Aaron gives up on answering it, noting that he must first visualize it. However, the instructor tells him he can't leave until he finishes it. Afterward, the artistic teen goes to the library to study the equations and water striders but later falls asleep. Before the library closes, Darcy wakes him up and invites him to have coffee. In the cafe, the teen confronts Aaron, inquiring if the rumors about him dating a married woman with kids are true. In response, the artist clarifies that Linda isn't married and just has one daughter. He also implies that because of Bill's consistent private moments, he had to sleep in the older woman's place. Before returning to their dorm building, the freshman kisses Darcy, and she reciprocates. Following this, the teen puts his scarf on the doorknob to signal Bill not to disturb them. However, his roommate still knocks on the door, prompting the artist to tell him to leave. Later, as Aaron undresses Darcy, he notices her armpit hair. In defense, the teen claims she doesn't believe in hair removal because it's insidious. The artist moves his hand down and touches her hairy leg as they continue, prompting him to back away. Because of his reaction, Darcy feels offended and walks out of the room, encouraging the minimally clothed freshman to go after her in the hallway. As a result, some students laugh at him. As the embarrassed Aaron rushes back to his quarters, he surprisingly finds Beth, who confronts him if he's sleeping with her mother. However, when the artist denies this, the punk teen confesses her love for him. When she explains that she feels electric when she sees him, the college student invalidates her feelings, pointing out that he's not going out with someone younger than him. However, Beth insists he sleeps with her instead and unzips her clothes. Suddenly, Bill enters the room and catches them, assuming his roommate is screwing Linda's daughter. Immediately, Aaron quickly requests his keys to drive the punk back to her apartment. While the artist is gone, his mom calls the phone, and Bill answers it. When she finds out that her son is not in the room, the controlling mother tells the roommate that she's holding him responsible if Aaron doesn't reach out to her in 24 hours. After dropping Beth home, the freshman returns to his dorm and finds his scarf on the doorknob. However, he disregards it and confronts Bill for always having someone over, implying that he can't rest on his bed. When his roommate points out that he should respect the signal, the frustrated freshman takes a lighter from the desk and burns the cloth, triggering the fire alarm. As a result, everyone had to evacuate from the building.
building. Outside, a concerned Bill asks Aaron what's bothering him, prompting him to reveal that he's in love with Linda, but she's dating a cop. The following day, the freshman attends Linda's writing class. While Professor Krauser praises his essay, he notes that he's not enrolled in his course. Afterward, the instructor hands the woman her work back with a D grade. Upon seeing this, Linda asks the educator what's wrong with her paper, prompting him to reveal that it lacked analysis and depth. When she asks for another chance, the old man dismisses her request. As a result, the frustrated woman confides in Aaron, telling him she doesn't belong in their university. In response, the freshman offers to help her pass the course. That night, the artist attempts to apologize to Beth, who doesn't want to talk to him. He follows her when she enters the store, where he sees Ray Ray giving her an illegal substance. When Aaron tries to confront the teen about her dangerous activities, the sarcastic punk discloses that she looked after her mom as a child, implying that Linda isn't stable. Upon hearing this, the artist suggests she stay with her grandma, but she only notes how controlling she is. Upon returning to the house, Beth sees her mom with a ring, learning that Wes hopes to marry her mother. However, the teen disapproves and only speaks to her mom disrespectfully. After the punk walks out, the cop follows her and scolds her for rudely talking to Linda. Meanwhile, the woman clarifies with Aaron that she hasn't said yes to Wes yet. In Beth's room, the foul-mouthed teenager tells the policeman that he'll never be a part of their family. Because of this, the triggered man curses her in a low voice, prompting the punk to provoke him further for her mom to hear. As a result of her daughter's screaming, Linda and Aaron head upstairs to intervene. However, as they struggle, the cop accidentally hits his girlfriend, prompting her to order him to leave the house. The injured woman drives Aaron home with Beth in the back seat that night. On the road, Wes suddenly appears behind, asking her to pull over. To escape her ex, Linda accelerates, but a dog suddenly crosses the street, prompting her to slam the brakes. Because of this, their car crashes into a fire hydrant. As a result, Beth and Aaron have minor injuries, while the driver has a broken neck. As Linda stays in the hospital, Aaron sleeps in her house to accompany her daughter. When he hears the punk crying, he assures her it's not her fault. She then kisses him, but he pulls away. When the punk begs him to stay, the concerned artist sleeps beside her. The following day, the freshman builds his apparatus to walk on water. Then he brings get well balloons for Linda, who feels much better after the accident. Professor Oaken hands Aaron his test booklet during his class, which has a D grade. He praises the artist's drawing but questions why he can't solve the equations. On his way back to the dorm, Aaron recognizes his parents' car parked on the street. When he reaches the room, his furious mother confronts him for getting into a vehicular accident with an older woman. However, he defends that she is his friend, suggesting they meet her. As a result, Linda invites the artist's folks over for dinner. While eating, the woman shares that she met the freshman at an art class, prompting Susan to imply that it's an impractical course. Beth praises Aaron's abilities in response, labeling him the next Picasso. However, the controlling mom says she doesn't want her son to starve. In the kitchen, Susan confronts Linda for taking advantage of her son's vulnerable mind. Upon hearing this, the offended woman asks her classmate's mother to stop her accusation. Shortly after, when Aaron's mom volunteers to take the dessert to the table, the pissed Linda drinks wine. Then she heads to the living area and invites everyone to dance, but Susan refuses to join. Suddenly, Wes knocks on the door, and upon opening it, the cop witnesses his ex dancing with another man. Because of this, Aaron pushes him back outside and clarifies that the other guy is his dad. When the policeman expresses his intent to reconcile with Linda, the artist requests that he leave and promises to inform the woman about it. However, the suspicious Susan witnesses her son's encounter with a cop and stops the dancing. Shortly after, she orders her to stay away from Aaron. However, the woman only kisses the artist in front of the controlling mother, leaving everyone in shock. Afterward, Linda insults her classmate's mother for being too restrictive towards his son and cold towards Phil. Upon hearing this, Susan slaps the intoxicated woman. When the overprotective mom asks Aaron to leave with them, the freshman refuses, infuriating his parent. Meanwhile, Phil supports him with his decision. Afterward, the artist speaks with Beth, who notes that he made the wrong choice of choosing to stay with Linda over his mother. Following this, the worried Aaron sleeps beside the drunken Linda but dreams of being intimate with Beth. Suddenly, the woman awakens, blurting out Wes's name. Then she spends private time with the artist while mentioning the cop's name. Because of this, the offended freshman exits the room. As he walks to leave the apartment, Beth, who heard their noise, curses him at
and asks that he never come back. When he gets to his dorm, Aaron discovers Bill is having a private moment with Darcy. After she leaves, the promiscuous teen apologizes to his roommate, noting that they were talking about him before they got intimate. Upon hearing this, the freshman reveals that he also spent a romantic time with Linda, who was thinking about someone else. Shortly after, he pities himself for losing his friends and family, and adds that he needs to provide mathematical evidence the following day for his project, or he'll lose his scholarship. The following day, Aaron discusses his equation in class with a drawing of his professor using his apparatus. However, the instructor corrects his solution, noting that the writer must be lightweight to make the equipment work. He then challenges the student to revise his computation and looks forward to seeing him in the pool competition. As he works on the problem later that day, Linda calls him, informing him that Beth is missing. Following this, the artist heads to the woman's house and scolds her for not trying to find her daughter. Afterward, Aaron searches for Beth inside the store and discovers she is upstairs with Ray Ray and his goons. However, the thugs only throw the freshman out of the area. To get help, the artist calls Wes, and they both rescue the teen from the clerk's hands. As Aaron and Beth wait for the cop in the police car, the traumatized punk expresses that she wants the get well balloons the artist gave her mom when she felt unwell, noting that they'll make her fly away. Afterward, the policeman and the freshman take Beth home. When Linda reunites with her daughter, she hugs her tightly. Following this, Aaron calls his mom and thanks her for everything she did for him. The following day, the engineering students gather in the pool with their apparatuses. However, their equipment fails to keep them afloat. The artist is late to arrive, but he manages to walk on water and get to the other end of the pool. To make his Strider apparatus work, he utilizes balloons to make him lightweight, allowing him to stay afloat as he walks on water. This performance amazes his professor, who praises him for his excellent work. The next day, Aaron witnesses Wes putting furniture into a truck, leading him to learn that Linda and Beth are relocating to Jacksonville to live with the woman's mother. Upon hearing this news, he feels great sadness over their sudden move. Linda then expresses gratitude towards him for his support, while Beth assures the artist that she will return to visit him in four years, to which he vows he will never forget her. As they prepare to leave, the mother and daughter embrace the artist. After Wes drops him off at the university, Aaron runs into Darcy, who comments on the freshman's intriguing life. Shortly after, he playfully questions her cherry stem trick, asking if she ties the stem before putting it inside her mouth, which she confirms. As he walks towards, the artist finally recognizes himself as an engineer and notes his passion for finding out how things work. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.